Hello again! This is our video solution to problem 15 from Super Quiz 3, another optional problem here. This is another problem that is touching on the division algorithm, although it doesn't look like it immediately, uh, because we're actually starting with just a, a generic ring with identity. And let's see, we choose some element x in that ring. Uh, we assume that m is, okay, it's a, a, an integer greater than or equal to 1, and it's the smallest positive integer such that x to the m is equal to 1. Then we choose some integer n, positive integer, which also has the property that when you raise x to that integer, you get 1. So the difference is this one is just some, some positive integer, and this one was the smallest positive integer. Right? So that's, that's going to be a key here, right? This m, m is the smallest one. And we want to prove that m divides n. So, okay, there's a little note about being able to use the, the laws of exponents in a ring, fine. Uh, when you want to show that one number divides another number, and you really don't know a whole lot about those numbers, um, a really good approach very often is to take, uh, is to use the division algorithm. Particularly if you know, the, like maybe you know one thing about one of the numbers, like it's the smallest something or the largest something. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to do is say, well, we don't know if m actually divides n, but we could divide n by m, and if, it's, if it doesn't divide evenly, it'll get a remainder, right? So by the division algorithm, so by the division algorithm, uh, we know that there exist unique integers q and r, such that n is equal to q times m plus r. And r, well, we know it's going to be some non-negative number, but it will be strictly less than m. OK, so division algorithm now gives us a way of relating n and m, even though like we didn't really know much about them, right? OK, so now let's use what we are given about x to the n. We know that x to the n is equal to 1. So if I take x and raise it to the n power, I get 1. But x to the n power is now the same as x to the qm plus r power. And now I can use the normal rules of exponents. I can break this up as x to the qm times x to the r. And now I'm going to rewrite this so that the m comes first. And using this exponent law, rewrite it as x to the m to the q times x to the r. And the reason I do that is because I know that x to the m is equal to 1. So this will be equal to 1 to the qth power, which again, OK, q is a, I mean, we know both q and r are non-negative in this case. So 1 to the qth power is going to be 1, because you're just multiplying 1 by itself a certain number of times. If q is 0, we define that to be 1. So this whole thing is 1 times x to the r, which will just be x to the r. And now here's the beauty. x to the r is equal to 1. Well, so what? Well, what did we know about r? r is less than m. Uh-huh. So, well, what did we know about m? m is the smallest positive integer such that x to the m is equal to 1. So if r is a positive integer, we have a contradiction. Because we just showed that x to the r is equal to 1. r is less than m, and m is the smallest positive integer that when you raise x to it, you get 1. So the only way out of this is if r is equal to 0. So we conclude r equals 0. Is that good? Well, where did r come from? That came from the division algorithm. So if r is equal to 0, then n is equal to q times m plus 0, right? There's The r is 0. Hey, this is exactly telling us that m divides n. Ah, how lovely. OK, so the rule here is when you are trying to show that one number divides another number, and you know very, very little about them, except perhaps one of them is the smallest, Try the division algorithm 
that'll give you some extra information, right? It'll give you this pair, Q and R, and you'll know that this number R is smaller than the number that you started with, right? Smaller than the divisor. All right, hopefully this is helpful.